In the last video, we defined the configuration of our graphical user interface. So if we just briefly recap, this is where you set the title, the geometry. This is where you define the basic layout using the grid architecture. This is uh, where you define the start and stop button for our user interface. Then our user interface uses tabs to uh, separate some content. Um, this defines the tabs and then this defines the content of the tabs. So in this last video we will define some elements of the uh, configuration tab. So if we just look what will be the end result. Um, this is the end result. So first we have a demo label for our slider. This is dynamically updated, this number. This is a label which is updated when we click the button on the slider. This is a segmented button uh, which has uh, three choices. Then text box one, text box two, another slider which is the same as the first one. This is a, a checkbox and then we have a demo button which when we press it, it says hello. Okay, so now let's go into the code. Uh, here we define a slider. So as we saw earlier, on the first thing is a label. So we tell that it's a slider. We put it into the tab view config frame, which we defined here. So uh, all of these buttons are placed into a city key frame, and then we use the pack functionality to lay them uh, one over another. So the first one is at the top, then the second, third. So it's not a grid, but we use the pack functionality. So this is a label. Then here we define a slider. We define uh, from which number to which number this slider uh, represents. So we have from zero to hundred and each move of the button. Uh, okay, so there is 20 steps. So that means uh, it increments by five. Uh, this is a, a label which takes the number from the slider and it displays it inside. Uh, so then we need to define that when we press a slider, when we move the value from left to the right, uh, we execute this command and this command um, gets the number from the slider and it outputs it into the uh, label, into this label. So when we press the slider, this command is executed and uh, this label gets the value from the slider. So we get a dynamically updated value. If you look at how it looks, this is this. So this gets this number 70 gets dynamically updated when we press the slider and the slider moves in five in increments of five. So then we have, uh, then we use the pack functionality to put everything inside for, we have two labels and a slider, one label for this, uh, the demo text, then another one for the number and the third one for the, uh, for the actual slider. Then we define a segmented button. This is a segmented button with three choices. Uh, first we put the label, what this button actually is. We pack this label to the 
into our frame. Then we define the segmented button. We place it and we put three choices. And this sets the choice one by default. So when we run it, choice one is selected. Then we define a text box, again, label. Then we use the CTK text box. We use wrap word, which means that it will break the line uh, for the entire word, not ju just the individual characters. We pack it. This is another text box, same label, text box. We use the pack functionality. Then we have another slider, which is the same as the one above. Again, we have a label. We pack the label. We create the slider. This one has uh, from uh, zero to five is the number that it represents. It has five steps, which means it will increment by one. This is the label, which will um, output the slider value. We first input the text because when we start, we want it to pick up the first value. And then when we move the slider, this command will take over and will always output the latest value of the slider into our label. Then we have another checkbox. We have a checkbox, which is defined by CTK checkbox. We use the pack functionality. Uh, then we have a button. Um, this button, button has a command print hello. So when we press it, we get hello here. That is print. We need to use the Lambda functionality. So, because if we would not use the Lambda functionality, this print would just be printed the first time and then not anymore because Lambda, it creates a reference to this print function, which means when we press the button, uh, this function inside the Lambda will be executed because it will uh, have the address of this function. So then we use the back functionality. And uh, the last thing is the main text box, which is this one. It's a normal text box, which we uh, use the grid and uh, we put it into the first row and column and it spans two rows and three columns. Sticky north, south, east, west, which means it sticks to the upper, lower, left and right part of the um, user interface. So this is how it looks. Here we put the in configuration for our script. This is where we can output the help. And this is the statistics. When we press start, uh, this progress bar appears, but we can also wire uh, a function for a separate thread to start when we, um, when we press the start. Okay, so this is it. Thank you for your attention.